Holy Judgment Altar of Mount Holly, New Jersey. The mount, which sits 185 feet above sea level, was owned by Isaac Hazel Est and consisted of 100 acres until 1837. During Hazel Est's ownership, the land was clear cut and all of the timber sold. Over the years, subsequent owners sold off parcels which reduced the amount to its current 10 acres. In 1921, prompted by rumors of another clear cut, the township purchased the mount to protect it. A group of local businessmen took the steps needed in 1934 to make the mount a public park with 1.5 miles of trails. In 1935, an altar was built in this spot by the Protestant churches of Mount Holy for Easter sunrise services. It is used by the Rancocos Valley Clergy Association and area congregations for Easter and other services. Much has changed over the years since we first started documenting this mysterious location. The goats, who once were located here to remove the weeds, have been taken away. The security system, that guarded the well, has been silenced. The memorial for the banished witch is missing. There are many legends and tales of lore associated with this location. Tales of either a witch or the Jersey Devil himself are stored within the witch's well. The witch's legend is of a witch that was thrown down the well, but did not die, instead she lived for a few days and cursed the land. The townspeople then built the brick building over the well in an attempt to seal her in. Legend states that if you knock on the huge metal door you will hear three knocks back from the witch. The second legend is that a witch summoned the Jersey Devil and then killed her. The Jersey Devil was cast in the well and the brick structure built over him. In 1740, the Jersey Devil was exorcised by bell, book and candle. This refers to a Latin Christian method of excommunication by anathema, imposed on a person, or perceived demon, who had committed an exceptionally grievous sin. It has been stated that the Judgment Altar is the location where many witches' fates were determined and then hung. These wooden posts are rumored to be the poles that were used to hang the guilty witches. The gallows. The legends. The most popular legend associated with this location is that witches were hung at the altar. For years it has been rumored that witches have been put to death near the mount at the holy, holy, holy judgment altar, 4 feet by 8 feet by 4 feet. Up until approximately 2014, the stood wooden posts that were designated as the gallows that the witches were hung from. The accusers decided their fate at the altar and if it was found that the individual was guilty, they were promptly walked over to the gallows only a few feet from the judgment table and hung. Recently the local church constructed a sign describing the history of this table. But of course people that still believe in the story of the witches being hung by past Christians, feel that the modern church is covering up the story. According to law, on October 22, 1730 over 300 people had gathered to witness the trial of two people, a man and a woman, who had been accused of witchcraft. The charges included making their neighbors sheep dance in an uncommon manner, and with causing hogs to speak and sing psalms, to the great terror and amazement of the king's good and peaceable subjects in this province. This took place 40 years after the famous witch trials in Salem, Massachusetts. Based on Ben Franklin's writings, it seems that he was just toying with and making fun of people's superstitions of the time. 
there was a fenced-in security system surrounding the witch's well that would audibly tell you to leave the area or face prosecution. This elaborate system made people suspicious as to what was really at this location beyond the water tower. The audio warning was either disabled or not working. The security system used to state, stop. You have been caught on camera and this will be used in your prosecution. Turn around now, when you ventured too close to the fence. The fact is that approximately 200 feet behind the witch's well, there is a water tower. This structure houses some of the mechanics that control the water flow. Many people wondered as to why there was a barbed wire fence with a high-tech security system surrounding this area, and this is the reason why. On the mount there are two geodetic survey sites that are also positioned all across the United States to measure earthquakes and tectonic plate movement. One of the first settlers of Mount Holly, Isaac Hazel Est, used to have a house on the mount. Many of the bricks and masonry rubble can still be found spread out across the top. It was also rumored that outside the fence of the Mount Holly Cemetery and between the mount, there was an exiled witch that was not allowed to be buried within the cemetery grounds. In previous years someone made a memorial for this witch, but has recently been removed. There is also a rumor that another witch is buried inside the graveyard. How this happened, I have no idea since it conflicts with previous statements referring to the other witch who was exiled to outside the cemetery gates, and on her gravestone it reads, Thus is the fate of all who turn from God. The location of the grave is believed to be on the ridgeway side of the Mount Holly Cemetery, New Jersey. The area was searched at great length but this legendary and elusive grave could not be located. Some stones were very hard to read and others were buried in thick underbrush. It was overheard that satanic goats are present at the mount. It is true that the township did have goats here near the mount for some time to assist in eating the rogue vegetation. But they were in no way, shape or form associated with devil worshippers or satanists. A Witch Trial at Mount Holly, October 22, 1730 by Ben Franklin. Burlington, October 12th. Saturday last at Mount Holly. About 8 miles from this place, near 300 people were gathered together to see an experiment or two tried on some persons accused of witchcraft. It seems the accused had been charged with making their neighbor's sheep dance in an uncommon manner, and with causing hogs to speak, and sing psalms, to the great terror and amazement of the king's good and peaceable subjects in this province and the accusers being very positive that if the accused were weighed in scales against a Bible, the Bible would prove too heavy for them, or that, if they were bound and put into the river, they would swim, the said accused desirous to make their innocence appear, voluntarily offered to undergo the said trials, if two of the most violent of their accusers would be tried with them. Accordingly the time and place was agreed on, and advertised about the country, the accusers were one man and one woman, and the accused the same. The parties being met, and the people got together, a grand consultation was held, before they proceeded to trial, in which it was agreed to use the scales first, and a committee of men were appointed to search the men, and a committee of women to search the women, to see if they had anything of weight about them, particularly pins. After the scrutiny was over, a huge great Bible belonging to the justice of the place was provided, and a lane through the populace was made from the justices as to the scales, which were fixed on a gallows erected for that purpose opposite to the house, that the justice's wife and the rest of the ladies might see the trial, 
without coming amongst the mob, and after the manner of more fields, a large ring was also made. Then came out of the house a grave tall man carrying the holy writ before the supposed wizard, as solemnly as the sword bearer of London before the Lord Mayor. The wizard was first put in the scale, and over him was read a chapter out of the books of Moses, and then the Bible was put in the other scale, which being kept down before, was immediately let go, but to the great surprise of the spectators, flesh and bones came down plump, and outweighed that great good book by abundance. After the same manner, the others were served, and their lumps of mortality severally were too heavy for Moses and all the prophets and apostles. This being over, the accusers and the rest of the mob, not satisfied with this experiment, would have the trial by water, accordingly a most solemn procession was made to the mill pond, where both accused and accusers being stripped, saving only to the women their shifts, were bound hand and foot, and severally placed in the water, lengthways, from the side of a barge or flat, having for security only a rope about the middle of each, which was held by some in the flat. The accuser man being thin and spare, with some difficulty began to sink at last, but the rest every one of them swam very light upon the water. A sailor in the flat jumped out upon the back of the man accused, thinking to drive him down to the bottom, but the person bound, without any help, came up some time before the other. The woman accuser, being told that she did not sink, would be ducked a second time, when she swam again as light as before. Upon which she declared, that she believed the accused had bewitched her to make her so light, and that she would be ducked again a hundred times, but she would duck the devil out of her. The accused man, being surprised at his own swimming, was not so confident of his innocence as before, but said, if I am a witch, it is more than I know. The more thinking part of the spectators were of opinion, that any person so bound and packed in the water, unless they were mere skin and bones, would swim till their breath was gone, and their lungs filled with water. But it being the general belief of the populace, that their women's shifts, and the garters with which they were bound helped to support them, it is said they are to be tried again the next warm weather, naked, Franklin, B. 1706.